So in this video, I'll continue the discussion of predicate logic semantics by talking about the valuation function for predicate logic semantics. In particular, we'll look at the valuation function for non-quantified formulas. And in another video, I'll take a look at the valuation function for quantified formulas. So just a quick review, the semantics of predicate logic are characterized in terms of two parts. The first part is known as a model, which consists of a domain of discourse and an interpretation function. This video will fun focus on the valuation function. So let's look at the definition of a valuation function in the language of predicate logic. Here we won't present the full definition, and so we'll present part of it. And in this video, we'll only focus on a certain aspect of this definition. So the definition of a valuation function is that relative to a model, so a domain of discourse, as well as an interpretation function, what a valuation is, is a type of function that assigns a truth value, T or F, one and only one, to each predicate logic well-formed formula. And it does this in the way, in a way specified in these kind of three rules down here that we'll kind of go through. Here we'll only focus on um, the first two, but the valuation function is a way of assigning truth values, T or F, to formulas given the way that's going to be specified by these three rules. So the first case is a predicate logic formula where the predicate logic formula consists of an n place predicate term followed by n names. And it says that this type of formula, a predicate, an n place predicate followed by n terms is true if and only if our interpretation of A is in the interpretation of R. That is, the interpretation of A is in the interpretation of R. Now, if this doesn't quite make sense right now, that's okay because I'll look at, I'll kind of go through it in a little bit more detail and we'll go through a number of examples to help illustrate it. The other thing to take a look at are when the, it's a predicate logic well-formed formula, but the main operator is a truth functional operator. So negation or con the conjunctions or disjunctions, or conditionals and biconditionals. Here there's nothing new to really learn. If you, I'll put a link in the description below if you're unfamiliar with this, but what, how these formulas are determined are determined in the same way that a propositional logic valuation function is determined. So for example, in the case of conjunctions here, the conjunction P and Q is going to be true if and only if um, P is true, so the valuation of P is true, and valuation of Q is also uh, true. So it's determined in the standard way that propositional logic formulas are determined. So I mentioned our definition here was going to be partial. This is because I won't specify quite yet how the truth values of quantified formulas are determined. I'll leave this for a later video. So I'm gonna take a look at the first valuation function once again. That is how we go about determining the truth value of n place predicates followed by n names. Now I wanna just sort of state this rule again and then we'll look at some examples that will help illustrate this. So what this rule states is that the truth values T or F are assigned to non-qualified formula. And by this, I just mean the N place predicates followed by N names. And it's determined in the following way. So we have a closed well-formed formula um, consisting of a predicate R followed by the appropriate numbers of A, pro pro appropriate number of names A. And this type of formula is true if and only if, as we stated, the interpretation of A is in the interpretation of R. So the interpretation of A is in the interpretation of R. Now let's state this with a couple examples and then we'll look through some more detailed examples. So what we're saying here is that a formula like HA, where H is a one place predicate followed by one name, this particular formula is true if and only if the interpretation of A, that is the interpretation of A, is in the interpretation of H. 
So you can write the interpretation of A is a member of this set picked out by the interpretation of H. Similarly, LAB is true if L is a two-place predicate, it's followed by two names here, if and only if the interpretation of A and B is in the interpretation of L. That is only if the ordered pair is found in the interpretation of L. So now let's look at some more detailed examples now that we've kind of fleshed out this definition just slightly. Okay, what we have here is a model and what I'd like to do is go through a number of formulas and talk through how the truth value of these formulas are determined. So let's take a model where the domain consists of three circles and for ease of convenience, let's refer to these circles as one, two, and three, where one is the blue circle, two is the red circle, and three is the green circle. The model not only consists of this domain of discourse, but it also consists of an interpretation of the names as well as the predicates found in the language. So let's let A refer to the blue circle or circle one, B refer to the red circle or circle two, and C refer to the green circle or circle three. In addition, let's talk about two predicate terms. First, we'll look at a one place predicate, let's say G, let's say in intuitively we can think of this as the G picks out is green or anything that's green and L which will be a two place predicate and it'll pick out um, a ordered pair or things in a certain type of relationship where the first object is larger than the second object. So we see that this um, interpretation of L picks out first this sort of ordered pair where circle three is larger than circle two. It also picks out a ordered pair where circle three is larger than circle one. And finally it picks out an ordered pair where two is larger than circle one. Okay, now that we have that in place, let's go through and look at different non-quantified formulas and talk about how we can determine the truth value given this model. So let's start with GA. Here's this predicate logic formula. It's a one place predicate followed by one name. Now let's talk about how we go about determining this. So we have GA and what we have to ask ourselves is, is the interpretation of A in the interpretation of G? And so is the object picked out by the interpretation of A in the interpretation of G, in the set picked out by the interpretation of G? So let's see, A refers to the number one here, or the blue circle and G refers to all the green things in the domain. So it only has the green circle or circle three. So what we see is that the object picked out by the interpretation of A is not found in the interpretation of G. That is if A just refers to the blue circle and G picks out the green things, we see that the blue circle is not in the collection picked out by the green things. And so what we see is that no. And given that the interpretation of A, that is the blue circle, is not found in the interpretation of G, which is the green green things, we have to say that the valuation of GA is false. Let's look at another example. How about GC? To answer this, we say is the interpretation of C in a member of the collection picked out by the interpretation of G. So what does the interpretation of C refer to? Well, what it refers to is the green circle or circle three. And is this in the collection, is three or the green circle found in the collection picked out by the interpretation of G? And yes, the green circle is in this collection of green things. And so we would say, yes, GC is true. How about the LAB? Here we have L, which is a two place predicate followed by two names. And let's go about trying to determine whether or not this particular formula is true or false. So what we are doing here is seeing that is the ordered pair where the first item is picked out by the interpretation of A and the second object is picked out by the interpretation of B, is this ordered pair found within the interpretation of L. 
So if we look, we see that A, the interpretation of A picks out number one, or the green circle, and B picks out the red circle. So we have the first the green circle, then the red circle in this ordered pair. Or first one and then two. So is this ordered pair found in the interpretation of L? So we look through the interpretation of L and we see three, two, three, one, two, one. We don't see one, two. So no, since the interpretation of A and B is this ordered pair of the blue circle and red circle, or one and two, and one and two, this ordered pair is not found in the interpretation of L, the truth value of LAB is false because it is only true if and only if one and two are found in the interpretation of L. How about LCB? Again, this is a two-place predicate term, L followed by two names, so it's a well-formed formula, and let's go about trying to determine if it's true or false. So what we're, again we're gonna do is look to see if the ordered pair where the first item is picked out by the interpretation of C and the second object is the interpretation of B, is this found in the interpretation of L? So is the ordered pair consisting of three as well as two, that is where the first item is three and the second item is two, is this found in the set of ordered pairs picked out by the interpretation of L? And what we see is, yes, since the interpretation of C and interpretation of B is this three, two, this ordered pair three, two, and since this is in the set that's picked out by the interpretation of L, the truth value of LCB is true. So this video should have given you a, at least an introduction to determining the truth value of non-quantified formulas in the language of predicate logic. And in the next video, what we'll do is look at quantified formulas. These are formulas where the, the main operator is the universal quantifier or the existential quantifier. And we'll talk through how to determine the truth value of those quantified formulas.